I call this meeting to order. Please silence your cell phone so we can conduct our business and stand for the invocation by This is a uh, short Christmas prayer for everyone. Just listen along with me. Uh, loving Father in heaven, what a joy to come together this business meeting. Thank you for the love and care you have given us. It has taken your hand to finish the year well, and this is the period we reflect back for your goodness. As we deliberate issues in this meeting, we call upon you for your presence to abide with us as we look forward to the Christmas season that is ahead of us. We pray for the good health and your goodness to always follow us. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers through the name of our Lord Jesus. We pray and we believe. Lord, please look over our fellow council member, Patty Pacino, and provide her with a rapid return to good health so she can join us. Amen. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. public comments? All speakers should have signed up in advance with the city clerk. Each speaker will please use the podium. Please state your name and address before beginning your statement. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. Please address your comments to the chair. Council will not engage in debate with the speaker. On your first bell, that means you have 30 seconds left. On the second bell, um, your time is up and we'll have it. Um, Rob Creedy. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Rob Creedy. I reside in Rochester, 241 South Plymouth Avenue, um, Rochester 14608, operating out of Pub Coffee Hub here in the city at 56 Harvester Avenue. I asked to speak tonight, and for that I'm uh, appreciative that you're allowing me this opportunity to address a, a lack of communication between the city and what I feel are businesses, particularly mine, uh, located outside of the bid district. Uh, I know from my time owning a business in the bid district uh, back in 2003 through 2008 that we were very well informed of everything that was going on that would affect our business. I feel like the communication now is not up to snuff as it was back then. I don't know if it's a time, you know, times changing or the fact that I am now located on Harvester Avenue uh, versus being right in the heart of downtown, which makes a big difference, I've learned. This is regarding the emails that you've seen, and I apologize, I don't want to be that annoying guy that's constantly bombarding you with emails, but I feel like that's the best method of getting everyone's attention at once. I came tonight to speak to you face-to-face -to -face, uh, regarding some of these issues, well documented as we've exchanged before, the progress of the road work that tore up Harvester Avenue for two months, uh, which greatly affected our business. That's over and done with. Um, there was a lot of things I feel could have been alleviated and problems avoided had there been an open line of communication between the city and business owners such as myself. I represent one of over 70 businesses in that Harvester Center, not to mention um, other businesses on that street, not in our center. Uh, the, the recent issue here is after the construction was finished, we were afforded street parking, on-street parking, on the east side of Harvester Avenue, which had been no parking previously. I was like, great, okay. We went through a lot of hardships over the past two months, not being able to have people come into our businesses. This is a nice little consolation prize for all the, that time we spent suffering with our sales. Six weeks passed, no, no issues there. People continue to park on the street. Um, I caught wind that they were going to re-erect those no parking signs. So in an effort to find some clarification and a better understanding. This past Friday, I went down to the city police department, as I understand that is their, their, their territory to uh, monitor and enforce. Uh, I was unable to speak with the police chief. I was um, afforded the opportunity to speak to the parking enforcement officer, uh, Officer Quilliam. He kind of, I don't want to say gave me the roundabout, but wasn't very helpful. You know, he said, you, know, you can't really speak to the police chief. This is, you know, I can help you with this sort of thing. Um, and after explaining my plight and the situation at hand, he said, your best bet is to go back to the city. 
Well, the last thing I want to do is get in everyone's ear again after all the fuss that I made regarding the construction, but I felt that was the next course of option, so here I am to speak to you today. Uh, the issue at hand is that I understand there's no parking, then we got six weeks of yes parking, and now without notice or anything, we're back to no parking. Specifically as it relates to my business, my customer base is primarily people who have a routine. If any of you are coffee drinkers, you probably have a coffee routine. You wake up in the morning, you, you go for a run, you take a shower, whatever, you grab a coffee on your way to work, whatever it is. It's the same thing day in, day out. Back when they started the construction, all of my customers' routines were upheld, were, uh, were you know, thrown in the wind. Um, whether the road was w safe to drive down or not is open for debate, but whether we liked it or not, the majority of my customers felt that it wasn't a road that could be drove down. So for two months, their routine was disrupted, and in my case, again, there's way too many other coffee options in town, so why waste your time coming back to me when you can go somewhere else that has a serviceable road to drive down? So the routine was disrupted. Six weeks passed, roughly about the time that it took for the construction to end. Um, great, we have a beautiful paved road. Everything looks nice. We have new parking on the side of the street. Everyone gets back into a routine of, hey, let's go back to, to Pub Coffee Hub. You know, it's, the road's nice and clean. We can park on both sides. There's ample parking. Well, as you know now, that, that routine is being disrupted again. So it's the inconsistency of, of what's being afforded to my customers to get to my business, which is a, a product of the lack of communication that I'm getting from the city. Um, after the fact, we've had good, good conversation, you know, the last time with a road being paved, and, you know, I spoke with uh, Ms. Tabelsky before this. She said that I would be hearing from the police chief regarding this issue. But again, two times in the past three months, damage is already done. I'm just trying to make a, a living like everyone else here, you know, providing a service to the community on Harvester Avenue. Um, so my... my my wish or my, my, my ask of the council is what can we do to implement structure to have conversations beforehand with business owners who are going to be affected by something that's more or less out of our control so that we can prepare for it, we can prepare our customers for it, and we can come up with a game plan to minimize the amount of damage that our revenue stream is going to suffer because of these situations. Second to that is Multiple, I wouldn't say multiple times, but a handful of times there have been conversations. I know I've tried um, trying to get some clarity on it before I even open the shop. And if I'm, my understanding is correctly, our business, or I'm sorry, our facility manager has also tried to get clarification regarding the parking on the east, I'm sorry, the west side of the street, where there are time limit parkings, two hours, 15 minute parking limits, which to our understanding is not uh, enforced by the police department. There's some back and forth as, there, as to who put the signs there. Was it the city that put the signs there? Was it the harvester, you know, Mancuso's previous owners that put the signs there? So, again, looking for clarification as to if we're enforcing parking on the east side of Harvester Avenue with no parking, why can I not call on a car that's been parked for more than two hours taking up spot in front of my business for infringing on that posted sign and have them cited or, or whatever the punishment may be? So... In summary, again, looking for better communication ahead of time uh, so that we can all prepare and get through these times you know, together. Uh, I understand that there's tons and tons of businesses in the city. I'm not the only one. But I would like to see something implemented where the next time there is a major road work or something of this effect where uh, traffic patterns or parking patterns are going to be um, updated or, or, or changed in some capacity that before these things happen, there is a conversation that is had, again, with those who are, are directly affected by it. Last part regarding the parking, uh, I know that a lot of residents were concerned about people speeding down the street. I've seen it all the time. I know it's not the only street in town that people speed down, people are reckless and what may have you. But what I have noticed in those six weeks where we did not have the no parking is that people are forced to drive slower. It's a lot safer. So I beg the question, were there any incidents in that six weeks where there was parking on both sides of the street, where people were injured, where you know, having the no parking again is a safety concern that needs to be addressed, and that's why it's not there? Again, I don't have the answers. I'm hoping to get those you know, in the near future from the police chief. But there are a lot of pros to having that parking on both sides of the street. 
So I don't know what the criteria is that goes into determining that. Obviously, I'm not the police man by any definition of the word. He knows way better than me. Um, but I would like to understand, hey, this is how we came to the decision. And, you know, at the end of the day, you may be like, this is the way it is, whether you like it or not. You know what? I don't like it, but what am I going to do? I'm still going to do business here, but at least I have an understanding, and then I can articulate that to my customers and everyone that comes through, because they're going to ask me, hey, I thought we could park there. No, I guess it was, it was just a temporary thing to get your hopes up sort of situation. So between the increased parking, the slowing down of traffic, I don't know uh, if there was or wasn't a complaint regarding the parking on both sides of the street, but uh, I would love to see it revisited. You know, again, have a dialogue. Let us understand why it is or isn't happening. For one, there was some kind of mistake because I think you, is, is there time left? Or is it's one minute, left? but I don't have the bell, so I apologize. Okay. okay. So, secondly, um, I think what we need to do is refer you back to the police chief. He's the one who writes these orders. Mm -hmm. And then we can take a look at it. I mean, I don't see why we can't just revisit that and take a look at that street. And I'm sure there was a reason why, maybe during the industrial days of the place where that was done, maybe it needs to be revisited. Mm -hmm. Would that help? Yeah, I mean, I would love, you know, so again. Please, Chief, kind of, you know, make your contact, do get a meeting with him, and, he, well, he knows now, right? So, Sean, can you? Yeah, oh, sorry, you're, oh, you're, I'm sorry. I was out of the office yeah, on Friday. And not a problem I, at all. I got an email over the weekend mm -hmm. looking for some information. I was crafting that today, so okay. I will reach out to you. Thank you. And we can sit down and talk about this. I appreciate but, that. Thank you. Um, we get some clarification. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we can maybe revisit that we've changed parking before, mm -hmm. um, as long as it's warranted. So, we'll look at it. Okay. So that, that is the major piece of this, so I appreciate that. And second, I don't want to get lost in the fact that, hands down, there needs to be better communication. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're working on that. We had some staff changes, and it's all new. These are big projects, and we got kind of overrun with COVID, and then skipping a year, and now trying to get them all done. So it's just the way it worked out. So I understand that. that as well. I understand, and I appreciate your efforts on, on making that uh, you know, better in the future, and thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. I would like to uh, okay. comment. Address? For, okay. First of all, I, I'd like to uh, correct Mr. Creedy. There's no way in all get out that I go for a run before my morning coffee. <laughs> I don't go for a run, period. So um, it's, I didn't even realize that Rob was going to show up tonight. Um, and I just had a conversation prior to the meeting with Rachel um, because my business is also in that center as well. And so I've experienced. Um, all the, the turmoil and, and, and just a week and a half ago before the signs were reinstalled with no parking on the east side, I thought, geez, I wonder if we, with the new street, if we're going to actually allow parking because people were parking on that side of the street. It really opened things up. It gave us double the parking. And like Rob had mentioned, the one, first thing I noticed was what used to be like the New York State Thruway is now like Tracy Avenue as far as the pace of the traffic going up that street. It really slowed everybody down, made it a much safer environment. And I thought, you know what, I got to contact Rachel and, and, and ask her about that. And then all of a sudden I saw the signs were back up. I said, well, my, I, I'm, my question was answered. Apparently we're still going to keep it at no parking, but I would like to visit the idea of putting parking on that side. And then I find out that Rob's here tonight, unbeknownst to me, to discuss that, that particular issue. So I, I know, I'm sure that there's reasons why we can't, but there's also probably reasons why we can look at those reasons why we can't and maybe change those reasons. It's not a, a New York State uh, roadway. It's a city street. We should have some kind of authority to you know, allow parking or not allow parking. So I would really like to visit that myself, even though he's going to get together with Sean, I would like Sean also to uh, fill us in as well as to what might be able to be done. So. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. well, worst thing a businessman ever wants to hear is, hi, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you. Because he knows what's coming next. Uh, I, I just think, the other night I had a conversation with a gentleman from Oneida, up by Syracuse. And he said, boy, Batavia is a wonderful town. You have actually locally owned businesses, locally owned restaurants, locally owned taverns, locally owned stores. Well, we've seen the number greatly diminish. And I think it is absolutely vital that we do whatever we can to help these locally owned businesses. This man said in the town he's at, they're down to one restaurant that is not locally owned. It's owned by a chain. 
all the other ones that change have driven out of business. And, uh, you know, I, I have stopped at Mr. Creedy's, and it's, he's struggling to keep his business going. And people, if you, do, if you can't find a spot right in front of the building, where do you park? Uh, you can go over, around, over the railroad tracks and park in the parking lot ba in the back and walk, which, uh, you know, if a parent is dropping off a, a child at night in the dark to go to a, a business there, there's uh, uh, some businesses, you know, that involve children, they're not going to want to do that. And it's going to hurt other businesses. So I think it's just vital that we do whatever we can to accommodate this and take a real hard look at it. Thank you. I believe right in our council mission statement, it talks about supporting small business. So that's something we've done in the past, and we continue to do, and we'll look into it, and I don't see why well, we can't revisit it. It's an issue that needs to be looked into simply because the Harvester Center is in a major growth stage right now. There's just new business after new business after new business coming in. Now it's an incubator, so logic tells us that a lot of those businesses are going to go away after a certain amount of time. But if you look at the economy, that's exactly what's happening. There's a lot of people with interest in starting up their own small business. The, the, the baby boomers, that's the new form of retirement for them, is running their own business. Baby boomers aren't sitting home doing nothing in retirement anymore. And that's why the Harvester Center is experiencing this, this growth. And so it is so busy around that building right now. It's absolutely incredible. It's exciting. I don't know if any of you have gone up and down the street lately. I came down the street the other day, and I had to stop. I go, wow, they decorated the whole front of the building with Christmas lights and everything. It really looks nice. Um, there's activity going on in that building. There's a lot of foot traffic now, so we do have to look at, at safety concerns as well. So, Sean, I, I, I plead with you to look into any possibility that we might be able to provide that parking on that side of the street. Yeah, we, we will have to look into the width of the road, too, because there's legal <coughs> requirements as to eight foot each side for parking and the lane width as well. So, you know, I'll look into that as well for Chief. So, so there's a requirement. Yeah. So you can't, otherwise, you've got a one and a half lane road, right. and that's not going to be safe. Yeah. Right. Well, many city streets, including the one I live on, right. there's parking on both sides of the street, and now you're down to one driving lane. So. Right. But there's a difference between local roads, arterial roads, truck roads, so it depends on the type of road as well, so we've got to look into that through New York State DOT on, on that. Okay, but that's a major... Is that, what is that? A yeah, truck well, for grams in that, correct. What is that, a truck road or... Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of truck yeah. traffic. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sure you built the, the infrastructure underneath that road to handle the weight for those. Yeah. They, they, we wouldn't find on a city side street. Yeah. So we'll have to look into that, but I'll get with Chief and we can take a look at that. Yeah. But, yeah. Please do. Please put a really yeah. big magnifying glass on it, yeah, yeah. and you understand the concerns. If there's any way we can do it, I'm in favor of you know look, revisiting and changing the parking situation down there as long as it's safe. Yeah. Let's just widen the street. <laughs> Where were you a year ago? <laughs> All right, anything else? Okay, communications. The um, next city council regular business meeting will be held Monday, January 9th, 2023, at 7 p.m. City Hall Council Boardroom, Second Floor City Center. And we have a new police sergeant being sworn in today. So if you want to come up with your family and your Clerk, who's going to swear you in? And Quick introduction. Yeah, go ahead. Come right up and. Uh, Very good. Yeah. Officer Christopher Daniel Lindsay, otherwise known as CJ. CJ is an eight year veteran of the police force. He graduated his basic academy in Monroe in 2015. Currently a field training officer, bicycle patrol officer, former member of ERT. Um, he's received numerous letters of recognition from the Department of the Community. And he will begin his new role on December 18th as our swing sergeant. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the City Charter of the City of Batavia, New York. And the City Charter of the City of Batavia, New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I'll faithfully discharge the duties. Of police sergeant according to the best of my ability. Of police sergeant according to the best of my ability.
police facility update. Thank you, Council President. Um, we are starting the final design drawing phase that will result in the final design of the facility. I've asked Ken Pearl, our owner's representative, um, if you'd like to go to the podium. He's going to outline uh, the timeline that we will be under, and we'll go into a few other discussion points. Um, at any point, if council members want to get up and look at the renderings, they can do so, and I'll pass around these sets as well so you have them at the table. I don't think it's time for everybody. So feel free to look through them and pass them around. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a quick update on something we didn't talk about related to the geotechnical services as well. Uh, just so everyone on council is aware, uh, you are going to see activity at the project site. Uh, it does not mean we started any construction. Uh, there is a component of the New York State Building Code that requires um, buildings this large when they're designed to assess the subsurface ground conditions. So you're required to uh, do soil testing and sampling and then come up with a geotechnical report and rec foundation recommendation. Uh, that has uh, been commenced about a week ago in terms of contracts. What you're going to see or the public will see for the first time is some form of construction looking activities. Uh, in a nutshell, it'll be uh, small flatbed trucks that look like they have an oil derrick on the back. Uh, teams will come in and stand those rigs up in the air and you'll see um, lots of big oversized drill bits coring into the pavement. Uh, they're going to have to do about 15 to 20 hole samples. So I'm letting you know that because I forgot to mention it to Rachel earlier today. Uh, once there's visual activity out there, your offices or emails or phone lines may get some calls inquiring as to what it is. And the answer is simple. It's a required geotechnical analysis. It's geotechnical engineers coming on site to assess things. Uh, with that, uh, in terms of the status of the overall design of the project, uh, I think I mentioned at prior meetings, there's three basic components to the design, a schematic design phase, a design development, and a construction document phase. Those are the formal three steps for the architects and engineers. We've just wrapped up step number two. So we're uh, just moving into the final phase, construction document phase. Uh, that's basically where the engineers and architects are putting together uh, all the details, all the planning, uh, all in its final form. Uh, we've been very active involved in the first two design processes. Uh, we'll be more monitoring now in this final stage. This is, this is where the engineers are doing all their math and doing their final pipe fitting sizes and bolts and you know, everything's getting specified. Uh, we expect that to uh, keep going into February sometime. Uh, I would predict at the moment probably the first or second week of February. That will put us in a position that we could be bidding by March. And if all goes well there, we would be accepting bids in probably in the month of April. And then uh, construction conceivably could be starting in May or June of this year. Uh, the police department just finished, I guess, their last round of very robust <laughs> design reviews. There we go. Sean has commented on this. We, we actually had quite a few members of the police department. Uh, the architects offered some advanced uh, computer-aided design technology that was not part of our original agreement, but apparently it's something they do on a routine basis. Uh, I had the privilege of watching various members of the police department put virtual reality ma uh, masks and goggles on and experiencing their building for the first time uh, in 3D. Uh, we had to do it one at a time, we couldn't do it uh, as a group, but uh, the group got to watch this on a big giant screen as the person wearing the goggles was trying to understand what was going on. Uh, we had some giggles with it, but it actually was horribly helpful. Um, so that, uh, I would say, maybe knocked a week or two extra into the design process, because it really, uh, it helped the police department as users see some things and, and work some stuff out in their mind. I, as an architect, am very accustomed to looking at plans and can intuitively see certain things with experience, but even I forget sometimes, you know, if you're not living in the world of two dimensions, um, you can learn a lot if you can get into the three-dimensional world. Uh, so it's going to save us some, uh, a lot of trouble down the line, because uh, usually we handle this stuff when construction has gotten a certain ways along. 
uh, we can get into the building and, you know, as, as the crews are working and framing walls, we can start for the first time talking about camera positions or what does a person working here in reception see through a window? Can somebody monitor the front door? Those are the things we'd be handling in eight months. Uh, we actually got a lot of that taken care of a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, uh, and obviously you see behind me, uh, the architects were obligated to provide us a rendering but they said this technology, the way they work with it in their drawings, they said, how many renderings would you like? <laughs> and so we said, well, uh, what can you do? And they suggested an elevated front view. Uh, the first image you see here is Bank Street, down along the bottom in Elba. This would be the public entrance to the building. This is more of a ground level view, uh, looking at the, more from the Bank Street only side. They decided they'd give us a view at night, give us a sense of what's happening. And then this is the back side of the station from the public parking lot. Uh, none of these are in perfect detail. It's actually based on where they were at with the drawings about a month and a half ago. Uh, so we've, we've refined these, and actually these were helpful for us in terms of communicating what we did, like about some wall features or landscaping, uh, about uh, some of the siding and elements. But these are very close. Uh, I, I can give you an example. The, the main stairs coming into the building. Uh, they're currently shown with sort of a three-sided uh, design. Uh, we've actually simplified that to a one, just a one plane of stairs. There won't be multiple sides to it. So it's just those small refinements that are gonna be different. Uh, but we're going to, the architect sent these over to us just the other day. Uh, we mounted them yesterday, or I'm sorry, on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna leave these with Rachel here at the city so they'll stay in, uh, from here on in for the city's use. Uh, and they also gave us a small 11 by 17s, and uh, you, know, you, you can obviously speak to Rachel about that. And uh, with that, uh, my, my goal has been, uh, for the past couple of months, has mostly been focusing on staying uh, in the lane of what the police program has been. Uh, now for the next couple of weeks, my role shifts a little bit. Uh, I'm uh, much more focused on what we're gonna be trying to refine some costs. We're going to be refining some of the design parameters. Uh, some of the things we haven't mentioned to, to the architects, little things that we like that we think they're missing in the plans. We didn't know if they were not showing them or did they forget about something. So I'll be uh, kind of really spending most of my time babysitting the details for the next couple of weeks. Uh, but in terms of the police participation, that's been great. But you're a little bit off the hook, I guess, for the next couple of weeks. I'm sure I'm going to get some phone call later. Yes. Uh, I teased Chris when I walked in. Uh, uh, Chris Camp has become an expert in heating systems. Uh, we've made them sit through all the engineering meetings so they understood as much about the building and in turn the design teams understood as much about what they needed. Uh, you know, trying to understand or educate the police about how a more improved heating system can work, for example, and then they in turn talk about what kind of problems a heating system can cause for them, either in an interview room or different comfort levels that different staff members need. Some people in this building will be working there like in a normal office people. Some people are in and out of the hot and cold weather. The heat doesn't mean the same to them. So uh, we've had lengthy conversations about all kinds of details on the engineering and the architecture. So that's me in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Ken. I'll have you stay. Um, sure. We'll entertain questions. Myself and Chief have a brief update. On the financial side, we are still looking at the latest cost projections for the project, all in, including furniture, fixture, equipment, plus our soft costs of engineering at between 13 and 15 million. Um, financially, we're still in the running for a $2.5 million congressional direct spending grant that Congressman Jacobs put in for us. Um, we will know by the end of the December, depending on how the federal budget sessions go. So please keep your fingers crossed for that. Um, while that is still going on, we are trying to secure loan and grant funding from USDA as well. And in preparation for this year's budget, we're trying to fund um, more money into reserves for level debt that'll then be rolled into bond costs to pay the bond for the police station. So we definitely know we'll be bonding, um, but we're trying to lower that annual bond cost as much as possible through this process. We won't have final figures until March, like Ken said, after we go to bid with it, but we're trying to prep and take every step possible um, to lower the cost of what we actually need to bond through grants and then low interest loans through USDA. Um, Chief, did you have anything to add about the process 
um, that you and the police have gone and through. I just want to say thanks so much to Ken for his guidance. Uh, he's been amazing. I don't know what I don't know, and he knows all of this, so <laughs> this really helps. Plus, my team at the police department, Chris and Matt Moody, have helped tremendously to get this thing to where it is. Um, there's still things that we're learning, and still things that we're dialing in, but this has been a great, great project so far, and we look forward to the end of this thing. So we appreciate all your support as well. Thank you. At this point, if there's any questions from council, um, Ken came out for myself, Chief, or Ken, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, yeah, are we doing anything on with the disposition of the old building? Yes, so we have the Batavia Development Corporation received a grant to conduct a feasibility study for the reuse of the police station. They just went under contract with Insight Architecture to prepare those documents. We hope they'll be done in six months so that um, the goal would be to move that into the private sector um, through some sort of RFP process involving possibly the BDC or just the city itself and to do something that retains the historic character um, of that building and developers my hope is that there's enough historic character that they would get historic tax credits for it so it would be a more attractive deal to them to come into that building and put it back online in some type of reuse situation. So at this point, um, the city has no intention of keeping that building once we're fully moved out after construction. Good. I don't want to see the city own it one day more than possible. We'll Thank do you. our best to make the timing work. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. The city property property is appraisal. Thank you, Ken. Where do you live? Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Um, before you, you have a resolution, um, the request to utilize VLT funds and amend the budget to do appraisals on multiple parcels inside the Mall of City Center. Um, most specifically, on the map, you'll see parcels 17, 18, 19, and 20. It's the big blue block that used to be Gentleman Gyms and the Hideaway, Palace of Suites. Palace of Suites. Short um, stop, Hideaway. Yep. It's my youth right there. And the second block of properties is 11 and 11A, which used to be Valley Jewelers and then a doctor's office. We'd also like to have an appraisal done of two, which is the dance studio, which is completely finished. In the future, I will recommend appraisals for the um, for the parcels that the players is occupying but <coughs> after construction. So the goal of the appraisals is, especially for 1111A and the block of 17 through 20, um, to have that market value because we have interested um, businesses that are looking to come into those parcels and we can't give them any type of lease or purchasing price until the appraisals are done. Um, in our overall development strategy, I think the city center is in a really good place to look at the process of divesting from those parcels as there's more activity in city center. Um, this is the first step to start that process. I have two questions. So, parcel two, are we going to be selling that or is that being rented now? At this time, it's under lease. We just want an updated appraised value. And like I said, we'll do the same for 1635 and 39, which again is being leased by Batavia Players at this point. Okay, then parcel 11, I believe there's a common use hallway that runs from the back of that building to the uh, Outdoors. What's the status of that? The city owns Hall 2 and Hall 3. Okay. I don't. All right, that's Hall 2 then? I'm sorry, yes, correct. I'm sorry. Hall 2 attaches to um, 12 and 11. 
Council member, sorry about that. Yes. I, I know in the past that was always a contention because it was so full of stuff you couldn't egress from uh, building 11 out the hallway. Oh, I don't know where it stands at this point. We can look into that. I don't know. Never, I haven't been through there many years, but uh, uh, it was a problem. And, you know, I know there was freezers and refrigerators in there and all sorts of things. And, uh, it was it was a safety problem because if you went to the exit, you couldn't even open the door. So, okay. We'll gladly take a look at that one. Yeah, so if we sell it, we'll be faced with that. You know, better address it now than in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other thing. Why, is there a reason why we just can't use the uh, assess values on property? Yes, we need the market value according to the charter. Is that correct, George? Yeah, according to New York State law as well. It's a, you, you can't sell property for just assessed value. It's got to be based on fair market value after an appraisal. And that's New York State law. Okay. It's in our charter as well. And it talks about any property uh, Thank in you, excess George. of 15000 that has to be appraised. Section 69-9B, and A7. So you can look it up. I looked it up when I saw that, and it's pretty specific. Any other questions? Purchase of public, all right, first of all, are we in consensus then to move that to tonight's meeting for a vote? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's moved. Purchase of public safety vehicles. Thank you, Council President. Um, I will hand it over to the police chief, but I wanted to thank you for entertaining this resolution as we sat down to go over the budget this year. We typically budget the purchase of new vehicles and the use of reserves during the budgeting process. The chief pointed out that there will be significant delays if we wait past the new year. So he asked that we bring this forward to council um, in advance. So again, typically you would see this in your um, final budget that we work on in March, but we are bringing it forward because of supply chain issues now. Chief? Yeah, thank you, Council President, Members of Council. As Rachel pointed out, there are ongoing supply chain issues and with our police cars. We don't buy used cars. Everybody knows that buying new cars right now is very difficult. Um, so we have been informed that if our vehicles aren't secured by the end of the year with the purchase order, we may not get them next year. Um, we are, we've already run into the issue right now where our 22s that we ordered were actually, um, they canceled the order on us and put them in the 23 model years. So there's no guarantee that we get cars anymore. So we're just doing our best to stay on top of it, stay in front of it, and hopefully get these cars to their fleet as aging. We need to stay by the that replacement plan as much as possible. So we appreciate your energy. Any questions? Yeah, I, I say car, but yeah, it's our SUV. It's like the state bid vehicle now, right, though? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, our fleet is all Explorers uh, SUVs, which uh, standardize their fleet, which helps us when it comes to maintenance issues and tires and all that good stuff that goes with it. Um, but that being said, we are kind of tied into that model now. If we deviate from that, we have to buy the different parts and whatnot. So um, it's been difficult to find those vehicles. That's about working out, right? Those vehicles seem to oh, yeah, they work out great. More room. Every, every and police car has its issue, but these ones work out great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chief, who informed you that if you have to order the cars now? I'm just curious. So our, we have a sergeant that's in charge of our fleet, and he has been in contact with dealerships that deal in these areas, specifically the dealership that we purchased our 22s, which got canceled and made into 23s, stated if you don't get in line, you're going to lose your place. Probably because of the chip situation. Yep, shortages, just demand of everything. Again, new cars are, are hard to come by these days. And how many vehicles do you need to purchase this coming? Typically, we purchase two marked cars and an unmarked. I'm sorry, two marked cars, and then we try to purchase an unmarked. So this is going to uh, fulfill our, our our wants or our needs for the next budget year, as Rachel mentioned, of two marked cars and unmarked. And typically, how many miles on a vehicle that you retire? Uh, anywhere between well, more than we would like, but uh, upwards of 100,000 miles on those cars. And that's miles. Engine hours is a whole other. Yeah, they're running all the time. They're running all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, are we in consensus to move that to tonight's yes. business meeting? Yes. Okay, that moves. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Richmond. Call the roll, please. Council Member Dealey? Yes. 
Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Okay, and I now call to order the regular business meeting. I've been given a copy of the October 2022 financials. Are there any concerns or questions in reference to those? Are we in consensus then to approve the October 2022 financials? I had a question. Okay, a question. On uh, page six of, of the financial report, okay. page six, and it's, uh, says here the uh, under the city center fund we've already we've reached 101 percent of our budgeted fund right at the top mm -hmm. what's that mean so we've collected one percent more revenue than we projected okay and then at the bottom uh, net gain or loss it shows uh Nine thousand seven hundred twenty-six percent. So, if you go through, so the bottom you're referring to has revenues and expenses. It starts with the annual budgeted amount, and then moves into month to date, year to date, um, year to date encumbrances, and then budget less actual. So we've collected two thousand dollars more in revenue than we had budgeted. And then our expenses are only at 51%. And so the percentage is just out of whack there. 9,726% to the good. Because we've only spent 51% of that budget. I found that too hard to believe. <laughs> Very hard to believe <laughs> for once, you know? Yeah. Good. Yep. But I'm go. sure there are some contractual things such as um, we, we typically do them right now. Um, the elevators and those inspections, we have a lot of contracts inside this budget. Um, oh no, this is city center fund, I'm sorry. Brett, why is it so low? <laughs> um, I'm sure there's more that's gonna come out of there. Um, I'd have to look at the detailed report to answer that question though. Thank you. Yep. Are we in consensus then to approve the October 22 financial statement? Yes. Approved. You've all seen a copy of the November 2022 minutes. Is that in your packet? Any questions or concerns on that? Is we in consensus to approve the November 2022 minutes? Yes. So those get approved. We have several agenda items today. I'll start with 105-2022, the public hearing, uh, the resolution to schedule the public hearing, and I believe that's scheduled for January 9th, 23. What about that one, Mr. Manley? Resolutions uh, 106-2022, council meetings, Mr. Richmond. 107-2022, the uh, Green S. P.Y. Lynn for engineering services on the Bank Street. Mr. McGinnis. 108 2022, uh, members to various committees and boards, Ms. Briggs. 109 22, the uh, city manager to amend the budget for the uh, appraisals, Mr. Beely. And 110 2022, the police uh, vehicle, Mr. Bajakowski. City Attorney's Report. Yes, Council President, Members of Council. Um, we continue to work on a variety of matters, ranging from general contract matters, uh, general municipal questions by the various departments, tax foreclosure, code enforcement, a variety of matters across the spectrum, but there is nothing specific to report on at this time. Okay. City Manager's Report. Thank you, Council President. Before you, you have a memo inaccurately dated February 16th, 2022. Um, but we are trying to solicit your time and availability for budget workshops and budget sessions. 
If you could just review the memo you have in front of you, Krista will also be sending this out through email um, so we can pick the dates of those budget sessions and make sure they get on everyone's calendar. I know there's a lot of handouts tonight, but it looks like this with the dates on it. So again, you'll get it through email, but I wanted to make you aware that we are trying to get ahead and schedule those budget sessions and budget workshops in advance. Um, furthermore, I, we haven't talked about the wastewater ponds in a while, and I wanted to let you know that the uh, dissolved oxygen level of all three of our aerated ponds has remained well above two um, for the last seven months. So they are very healthy and they are doing very, very well. Um, we just got a report out of our operator and you know we do have some technical issues when blowers go down and we do reach um, DOs that are lower than two but in the in the last seven months it's gone very very well so I know we haven't had an update on that in a while so I thought I'd update you other updates include the departments have finished their budgets I finished the review with them as of tomorrow when we finish police and fire. So now we move on to creating the budget book and um, analyzing the numbers that we put into the budget for presentation on January 23rd to you. The budget will be delivered to you prior to January 15th, which is um, stated in the charter that it will be delivered to you by that date. So I look forward to having that to you as soon as possible. Um, we're continuing to move forward with the um, diesel oil tank um, leak that we had at the fire department and we will have remediation activities starting in the new year. Jackson Square Design, um, Ken Pearl, who was just here, is continuing to work to re-engineer that, hoping to put that out to bid and um, we'll have to work with the bid for a construction timeline that fits with their potential performances over the summer. So still lots of activity and communication to go on that project. Obviously, you just had the police facility update. Um, and lastly, we continue to work on a variety of projects, the Jackson Street Water Project, Bank Street Water, and Bank Street Streetscape, um, all of which we spend a lot of time on each and every day trying to advance those projects. So that's all I have, unless you have any questions. questions? <coughs> Committee reports? Anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Council President, myself, and uh, Council Person Schmidt attended the DWI awards luncheon. And uh, it was, the kids did a great job. They did, did some great posters and some things. And it, was a, it was a nice turnout. Hopefully, keep up the good work and see if it's uh, under your purview. The education is in this field definitely is needed, that's for sure. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't believe we have any unfinished business. So we'll start with 105 2022. Mr. Canale, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to schedule a public hearing for the Round 7 Restore New York Communities Initiative Municipal Grant Program. Second by Mr. Beauty. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. <clears throat> Resolution 106, 2022. Mr. Richmond, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution scheduling regular council meetings to December 31st, 2023. Second, Mr. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Resolution 107, 2022. Mr. McGinnis, please. Thank you, Council President. <coughs> Excuse me. I move for resolution authorizing agreement with Carmen. 
engineering services for the Bank Street Water System Improvement Project. I believe that's T.Y. So he, when he, when there's been a change, there's been an update, so. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, with T.Y. Yang, Yang, in right. engineering. Okay. I'm sorry. Any, any, uh, second by Mr. Hughes. Any questions or concerns? Yeah, we had a last minute right, change or something, Rachel, and that's why we got updated. So I apologize for that. It's the last minute thrown on our desk when we got here. So um, if you had a chance to look at it, it's pretty much the same with the new name. Um, so call roll, please. Council Member McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Vealy? Yes. Canelli? Yes. Okay. Resolution 108, 2022. Ms. Briggs, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to appoint members to various city committees and boards. Second by Mr. McGinnis. Questions or concerns? Call the roll. Council Member Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealy? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Resolution 109, 2022. Mr. Beely, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution of the City Council of the City of Virginia authorizing the City Manager to amend the 22-23 budget for appraisal services of the City-owned City Center properties. Second, Mr. Brad. Mr. Bradkowski. Any questions or concerns, Mr. Yeah, yeah just a, an afterthought from, from our previous discussion about this. Um, Rachel, once we get these appraised, how long is that appraisal good for? Because if you, you, you mentioned that you have some interest in some of these properties. If you appraise them now, the fair market value is going to be different six months, a year down the road. So in one parcel, we have a very interested perspective um, whether tenant or buyer um, and for the other appraisal my guess is that it's good for about a year a year and a half there's not a specific bright line John councilmember Canelli excuse me um, I think it's a reasonable standard in terms of you know when the, the appraisal is done and market changes and things of that sort so it could be good longer than a year Council Member Vealy? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. And Resolution 110-2022. Mr. Bajakowski, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to use police department reserve funds to purchase police department vehicles and amend the 22-23 budget. Second by any questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Bajakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. yes. And if you would put this into the executive session, this is the one for the Okay. Thank you, Council Whereas Article 7, Section 105 of the Public Officers Law permits the legislative body of the municipality to enter into executive session to discuss the collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, now therefore be resolved by the City Council of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council will hereby enter into an executive session. Second by Mr. Canales. Call the vote, please. Council Member Vealy? Yes. Canale? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. 